Hi, pumpkin. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. <laughs> this is our buddy. Um, what we could call him, uh, Jigger the Pumpkin. <laughs> Jigger. <laughs> there you go. It's our buddy Jigger. <laughs> We found him in a closet just a while ago. We we're trying to make this little set look festive. As y'all remember last year, yeah. we actually had <laughs> We actually had a pretty big budget for our Halloween horror picks video last year. Because I did it out on the porch and we had real pumpkins. That's right, we were sitting outside on that one, but that made that one even <laughs> twice. But this year, buddy. <laughs> foam pumpkin. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Oh, that's Jigger. His name is Jigger. <laughs> Say hi, Jigger. Hi, Jigger. So, what we want to do <clears throat> for this little video is talk about some great little horror films to watch on Halloween. Halloween is almost here. Isn't that right, Uncle Bill? That's right. And last year, if you tune into this, we... Uh, we did a little uh, 2007 picks where we picked 12 different titles that we really enjoy that aren't the mainstream titles. You know, I mentioned a lot of people around Halloween will always talk about Night of the Living Dead and the original Halloween and Friday the 13th and just different titles that might be expected. Right. But we try to mix it up a little bit and throw in different eras and different, you know, sub-genres of films and different stuff like that because we know that a lot of people don't enjoy the same old, same old mainstream style stuff. That's right. And if this if this set right here is scaring the shit out of you, we meant for it to be that way. That's right. We meant I mean, for everything to be this dark and to be in the shadows and for a little jigger here to be right between us because we didn't have anywhere to set him. But we wanted him to look like this. This is all planned. Jigger. Jigger's really scary, too. Look. So we're doing this in the dim lidded Dead Pit Studios. Right. And we're going to be talking about some movies tonight. And uh, we want everyone to check out the Big Ass Halloween Bash on deadpit.com on Halloween. I believe we're going to do the feature commentary. It's years in the making. Oh. Isn't that right, Jigger? Oh, that's right, buddy. Troll 2. 2. Now, that may not sound like you know the logical choice around Halloween, but there's no commentary for the film. It's one of the best-loved bad horror films of all time. It is. And it's one that we've actually had a personal you know, connection to because we interviewed a couple of the stars of the film at one time, too. So this Friday, go over there, deadpit.com, and check out the big-ass Halloween bash. People want to know what we're going to do, where we're going to have an interview, where we're going to have a round table. What the hell are we going to do? That's what we're going to do. We're going to stick to that. And um, interviews and all that stuff, you'll just have to wait on that because we ain't doing it. Yeah, see, there's a little behind-the-scenes information. For some reason, and I don't know why this is, most major horror stars apparently don't do anything that involves us around Halloween. And that's unfortunate, too, when you're talking about the, the female horror stars. Because I'd love for them to do, uh, well, to do me. What about Jigger? Jigger can get in on the action, too. Jigger, Jigger's a pussy hound. <laughs> that's Jigger. Jigger loves ah! sniffing ass. Jigger loves him some pumpkin snatch. Look at that, Tom. So, anyway, we're going to get into the movies. But another thing that we definitely want to talk about, and we'll probably talk about it on the MySpace show as well, is Dead Pit's actually making its TV debut. What the hell do you think of that, Uncle Bill? That's true, and from what I understand, I've only I've only seen it the one time that we were doing it, but it sounds like from uh, the response of the guy, that uh, good friend of ours that was looking at over the videos, that we actually did a pretty good job and of course. Yeah. So we're going to be on public access in a really small community, Gross Eels. We said Gross that like Eel. 50 times. So I Gross Eel, Michigan. And we might actually get picked up on a couple of other stations depending on what happens with yeah. the final product. But it's pretty exciting. Stay tuned to the Dead Pit message board, though, for the show time, whenever it's going to show and stuff like that. 
and we'll eventually have it available on the website as well for those that missed out on it. But it's pretty much us hosting a couple of public domain horror films, and um, it's our first attempt at doing any sort of horror host show. And evidently, we hit the ball out of the park from what uh, our buddy uh, Kelly the Beast Marcotte said. So we got that going on. Um, and we also have the Dead Pit Election Night Special, which is going to be our very first live Dead Pit show of any sort. You know, the way things have been going lately, I can only imagine how that's going to fuck up. <laughs> it ain't going to fuck up. It's going to run smoothly because it's Election Night, and it's uh, you know we're going to be celebrating... Let's not get ahead of ourselves yet. Because, you know, Republicans have this... Well, look at it like this. ...knack for rigging elections, as we all know. One way or the other, all I know is that dumbass George W. Bush is getting out of office. That's true. I just hope we don't put in another dumbass in his place. Yeah. So, anyway, enough of the political bullshit. We're getting into the movies. We're going to talk about some movies now because I know everyone looks to us for advice on what to watch on Halloween. And boy, do we have some great titles for you this time. We're not going to be doing complete reviews of this. We're just going to be t basically talking about the movies themselves, what's so in enjoyable about them, why they're so good to watch on Halloween, or why we think they're so good to watch on Halloween. So let's get into it. What do you have over there, Uncle Bill? Well, the first one, let's not get it confused with the Brendan Fraser, I think it was 1999 film. Uh, this one is actually 1932, I believe. And it's the original... I'm going to pull Jigger out Don't of the wall. Don't pull Jigger. <clears throat> It's the original Mummy. You can kind of see that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I promise next year we'll have more expensive lighting. So, Boris Karloff, who, of course, everybody remembers from Frankenstein fame, was the mummy in this film. And it's really not like a mummy-ass type of film because uh, an actual cloth, bandaged-up mummy doesn't really make an appearance maybe for, I don't know, 30 seconds in the film. Yeah. It's basically just a, a love triangle type of story that has more to do with Dracula than it does to do with a lot of the modern day movies. I am bars! It does. And a lot of the same sets were used that were used in Dracula. The guy that was the director of photography on Dracula, uh, or the cinematographer at the time, uh, actually directed this film. So, in a lot of ways, it's the same type of film. And I just think that it's really intensely creepy, especially visually. Because a lot of the scenes, uh, was his name Jack Pierce did oh, the, yeah. the makeup effects makeup for the effects, film. Makeup effects, legend. Yeah, and really the old age makeup on the mummy is some of the best stuff that they still use some of the same stuff that he used. Yeah, I think uh, Savini actually used the same technique in uh, with uh, Scott Reiniger in Dawn of the Dead, right? Um, where they would actually put this, uh, they would stretch the skin out, put a thin layer of latex on the skin and let it dry and then it would you know it would have this aging effect that uh, still to this day a lot of people use and it still looks really good but the movie itself while it isn't as regarded as like a Frankenstein or a you know Dracula as far as the universal movies go I think it's probably one of the more underrated of the whole Universal Monsters series I mean I would put it right up there with those other movies for sure yeah and it's got a really good gothic feel to it. It's, of course, in black and white. And it's one of those films that I think stands the test of time, even today, for the, the atmosphere of the film. So check that one out. Mm. One that I thought I would mention on here, because a lot of people on YouTube bring this movie up from time to time as being one of the most brutal, sadistic films ever made. Um, directed by Ruggiero Diodato, this one is Cannibal Holocaust. Cannibal Holocaust is getting around these days, isn't it? As far as it reputation. sure is getting around, but I always go back to the original viewing I had of that movie back in probably about 2000, 2001 when I first got a DVD player. And just one of the most shocking movies I've ever seen. I mean, not only the animal killings, which I know a lot of people, you know, detest that stuff. And I do too, really. I don't, I don't really, uh, uh, um, I you know I can't really uh, appreciate that sort of thing in a movie of any sort, but I think that the movie itself, just the way it was filmed, 
the music in the movie is some of the most bizarre sounding shit ever and it's really Ooh. yeah it's really an innovative type of film too um Blair Witch Project did the did a similar um storyline I guess to uh, Cannibal Holocaust but it was like 20 years later after this film came out and this is a movie that you definitely don't want to watch with uh well you want to be very uh, selective of the people you watch this movie with because this is a film that probably you could lose a few friends over they'd think you was really a fucking crazy son of a bitch but this is cannibal holocaust i don't know if everybody will like it but i've always enjoyed it and it's a great one to watch i'm pretty sure that that, oh, that edition which is the 25th anniversary collection edition is out of print now too well you can still get the movie though but here's a yeah that's one of those movies where the first time i ever saw it and i think a lot of people the first time they see it you cannot un know that movie i mean it, it stays with you for the rest of your life after you see yeah. it much like you know stuff like the text chainsaw massacre and faces of death and traces of death, movies like that you can never be the there's, same yeah, if you watch there's it. always at least two or three scenes that no matter how long ago it was that you've seen the film you'll remember them like he was saying so, so cannibal holocaust definitely check that one out up next is in my mind now that I've seen all the films and probably seen them about, I don't know, 10 or 15 times each, has the most to do with the actual holiday of Halloween and has a really, really good overall tension and atmosphere about the film. This is the one that all everybody... Actually, it made the uh, Yahoo list... Of the most unscary movies of all time. Let's kill them over. Now, this is Halloween 3. That's the season that. of the witch. Look at that. So, in this one, everybody always remembers this movie as the one that didn't involve Michael Myers. But in this one, there's a, a company that makes Halloween masks. That's actually a front for like an old druid uh, group of worshippers and stuff that want to on Halloween. Uh, have all the kids wear their mask and watch this one specific program that will trigger the mask to crush all the little kids' heads. And yeah, bugs and worms and shit come out of it. Yeah, and it's really neat in the fact that this whole town is built around this company and they got hired like assassins that take out anybody that questions you know, what the, the, the company is doing. It's just got an overall feeling of complete dread and you don't think an evil and plus it breaks the barrier of little kids dying there's actually kids that die in this film and it has tom atkins in it. of course you got the memorable jingle too like uh two more days to halloween 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 two more days to halloween silver shamrock you can look at the pumpkin too you're supposed to watch the magic pumpkin yeah so you can see a little jigger Let's see if we can get him to tilt his head like you're doing that. <laughs> right. Oh, shit. Oh, we got so, Jig wants to blow you. Oh. <laughs> get over here, Jig. Give me a hummer, you son of a bitch. I'm going to let Jig lick my rim. All right. So, this one has got Tom Atkins in it. And if you're a fan of Michael Myers, this is not the one to watch. But as it stands by itself, I think it's a really, really good horror film, and it does have a lot to do with the, the holiday of Halloween, so check that one out. Okay, sticking with the Halloween films, I want to talk about a sequel that came along a good 10 years after that movie, at least. This is Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. And... Um, if you really think about it, this is the end of a trilogy, a separate trilogy of Halloween films that began in Halloween 4. And this one really went all over the place with the, the Thorn Curse. And they went in that whole direction and stuff that uh, when planets align, you know, the, the, the Thorn Cold or something picks picks a killer in this case it was michael myers and they try to explain why michael as a young boy all of a sudden just went crazy and killed his sister so that's how they sort of explained it in this movie and this movie a lot of people hate this movie but i don't know man i mean I, we did a commentary for this one and 
while it's not that, I'll definitely admit it's not that good of a movie. There's just something about it I always liked, and I always can go back and watch this film almost every year on Halloween. And it has a great, a lot of the kids that grew up in the 90s, like we grew up in the 80s and mid-90s mainly, you'll get a great like grunge era horror slasher film, which there's not a lot of them, believe it or not, around that time where a lot of the kids were wearing flannel and torn up jeans, you know, the, the whole Nirvana craze and stuff like that. And this was really one of the few slasher films that was shot around that time. So it's cool to go back and look, too. And it really, this movie has a spirit of Halloween about it as well, I think, too. So I've always enjoyed it in that respect. Well, it also has a lot of really cool death scenes in it that I don't think people give the theatrical cut as much yeah. credit as they should because the work, the, the producer's cut that everybody always talks about as being the better cut is the toned down version of the film and it's actually in my mind a lot worse than the theatrical cut so that's really the one to have yeah. in all honesty but yeah, the other kills in it are very mean spirited and the overall tone of the film is one where there's like a conspiracy vibe to it where there's like all these different people involved with the thorn cult that you don't really know about until the yeah. end and really i mean i think the, the the first part of the movie gets you sort of into it but then the last part really fails i think it it doesn't live up to the first half of the film, and then the the climax is really, it really has no ending. Yeah, the really. climax is kind yeah. of stupid, to be honest. And unfortunately, this was Donald Pleasance's last Halloween film. And like I was saying, this really ends the Halloween films. I mean, after this, it was H2O, which sort of restarted a new, you know, because if you really look at it, you have the first two Halloween films, which sort of go together. Part three doesn't go with any of it. Then, to me, four, five, and six are another separate trilogy. Then after that, you have uh, you know H two O and Resurrection sort of go together as well. And then Rob Zombie's Halloween. I don't know where that goes. I'm not entirely. That sure. goes in the toilet. That goes but this one's good. I actually like it. So check it out if you haven't seen it. It's Halloween: The Curse of Michael Myers. Maybe one of these days we'll get an official producer's cut version, but I wouldn't hold my breath on it. Well, this next well, one... Well, <laughs> Well, this next one is actually one that uh, I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't expect, but on Halloween, if you really want a, a film that is almost like a nightmare type of film, you got to go with Dario Argento, or one of the Italian horror filmmakers. And this next one is one that absolutely surprised the piss out of me when I saw it because yeah. Yeah. it wasn't supposed to be good because it's a newer film and most old horror film directors cannot direct anything new worth a piss nowadays. But to me, it's just as good as any of his other films, to be honest, and that is uh, the new release of Mother of Tears. Mother of Tears. And this is one that's in the Three, Mo the Three Mothers trilogy which is Suspiria, Inferno, and now this one. The Witch Films is another way of it. Yeah. And it's really got, it's got Asia Argento in it. And she's the main one, and she's like an excavator of old ruins and stuff in the film. And she comes across this old coffin that was buried. And a friend of hers opens it up and unleashes the terror of this third mother. They unleash evil. That's right. And... Right off the bat, you got uh, Coralina Cataldi Tassani, who's been in a bunch of Argento films, and Demons is probably Demons too. Coralina Cataldi Tassani. That she's most noted for. She gets killed in like one of the most spectacular ways you could ever imagine. And the film is really gory, especially for a newer film. But not only that, but it has a, the same type of atmosphere as the other one. There's really weird fucking music in it, mm. like all the way throughout. There's the girl getting chased. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't have any place being in the film that's in the film. It's just like his movies were always really non sequitur anyway. They didn't make much sense when they all put together. And just visually, it's a great film. I think a lot of people were really unfair to this movie when it came out. Um, and I've noticed, you know, movies like Inside and um, Frontiers and stuff, getting a lot more respect in this film, and I really think that that's, I think that that fucking sucks. I mean, I liked Inside, but this movie is a whole lot better than Inside, in my opinion, and it's made by, to me, it's made by one of the best filmmakers, horror filmmakers, that there ever was, and he's like in his 60s now, and I think that that should say a lot 
to people out there, and I'm surprised that um, a lot of the Dario Argento fans have really, from what we've heard, I mean, a lot of them say they sort of liked the movie, but they were disappointed in it. I don't understand why. I really don't. I mean, for all the stuff that Dario Argento's made throughout the 90s, all of it is shit compared to this movie, in my opinion. I mean, this is one of the best Dario Argento movies since the 80s. So you'll definitely want to check that one out. Yeah, like I said, it's a good one to uh, include if you're a huge fan of his and never thought he would come out with anything that's like in the classic era of, you know, the films like Suspiria and Inferno and Opera and those films. It's right, the same type of film, and it's really, really one of the better ones that I've seen. So check that out. Indeed. Now, it's been a good 12 years since this movie came out theatrically. And I know a lot for a few years there, People were sick to death of these type of movies. But I think it's time to go back and watch Wes Craven scream again and get some enjoyment out of it. Because this is a film that is actually, if you, if you remember correctly, the end of it was Halloween night. They were watching movies on Halloween. And of course, they were the, watching the, Halloween on the Halloween. ghost face killer himself shows up. Slices and dices his way through a party, you know, with a bunch of teenagers. And it's a classic slasher. And it has a lot of uh, uh, tongue-in-cheek elements to it. And Wes Craven is one of those weird directors that can just come back and sort of reinvent himself. You know, and he's done it at least two or three different times. And I'm actually hoping he does it again, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Now he just wants to remake himself, it seems like. I, I don't give films. a shit what anybody says about this movie. You can like it or hate it or whatever. This is the movie that got like millions of people yeah. back into horror film. Yeah, I mean, if it, it was, was me, I know. If it wasn't for Scream, odds are deadpit.com wouldn't exist right now. I mean, that's just a fact. And a lot of people, a lot of websites probably wouldn't exist right now, too. I mean, um, some of the larger horror websites, a lot of the stuff that got, you know, if it wasn't for a Scream, there wouldn't be a Saw. I'm sure there wouldn't be... Uh, well, really, it was Hostel like it was like anything. Scream hit, and then Blair Witch hit a couple years after that. Those were the two things that that was really the whole horror genre for the '90s. I mean, there wasn't anything else big that really came out during that period of time. Yeah, I mean, this is seriously, this is like September twelfth, uh, if you will. It all changed. So, Scream, you definitely want to. I would advise everybody going out and buying this. Unfortunately, the DVD version of it is sort of shitty. I mean, it's still non-anamorphic. Well, it's been out for what, and, since yeah, like 1998 is, or something. This is like the same DVD that's been out since like 2000, I think. So I'm hoping maybe they'll release like a Blu-ray of this or something. to be really cool and a new special edition of it. But who knows? But I always love this movie. And I always, you know, it's another one that I really... Uh, uh, want to watch again this Halloween season. Who knows if I'll get a chance to, but that's Scream. And unfortunately, everybody got tired of Kevin Williamson's shit after a while. But that Well, was like, you had one good idea, man. Yeah. You can't have him hire, you know, hire his ass to make, uh, what was it? Uh, did he do it? He didn't do Urban Legend. He did, uh, I know what he did last summer, right? That right. was his. He might, did, and did Halloween he, H2O was his. He didn't do Urban Legend? That movie's exactly like Maybe he did Urban he did. Legend. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he it was just have. a rip off. Here's another one that you might not expect around Halloween. But this guy, Jim Van Beber, dedicated about... What was his name? Jim Van Beber. Jim Van Beber. Dedicated about uh, 10 or 15 years, somewhere around there, of his life to this film. And it didn't get released because he didn't have the money to release it or finish the film for about five or six years. He actually sold his blood to finance keeping the studio that made this film. And it's just, as far as like trippy fucking movies go, people that don't want to watch something conventional, this is one of the best ones. This is The Manson Family. And the first time I saw this movie, it was one of those movies where, much like Suspiria or something like that, you just don't know what to make out of it because it's not... It, at first, it's filmed in all vintage, like grindhouse stock film. All the actors and actresses in it seem like they're really fucking crazy. And from what you understand after, you know, the documentaries and stuff, they really were because they were on LSD and smoking tons of pot when they made the film. Jim Van Baber's a drunk who fucking basically <laughs> it just went off the deep end Poor in the fella. middle of making this film. Yeah, it's There's so many chaotic elements that go together that it makes it actually just 
kind of like real life, like the way that it might have been when all this stuff was going on with the Manson family, because it's 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 out there so much that it's hanging on by a thread, and you can tell that it is the way it's filmed and stuff too. Yeah, and another interesting aspect of it too is this is a movie he's working on for over twenty years. I mean, he originally started shooting it in the eighties. They would shoot some more stuff in the early nineties, then then you know just about five or six years ago they finally finished the movie. So that's another thing. I mean, this is a true independent film. They lost fine answers two or three different times, you know. And uh, there's also a documentary I think about that on the on the DVD as well. There, there's a couple and, of really good documentaries, but uh, yeah, the Van Beber family and the in the belly of the beast. But I'm just telling you, like as far as stuff you want to watch on Halloween, when you want like a certain vibe in a film, this is a film where there's so many memorable shots and camera angles and camera work and cinematography in the film. It's it's perfect for this time of year, I think. So that's why I picked that one. Yeah, that's a. It is definitely a different type of movie too. A lot of the other Manson movies can't really compare to this because this does. They shot it so well, it does look like it's from the '60s, early '70s. So it does. So check that one out from Jim Van Baber's home collection. Something else though, sort of like a, a a trilogy of movies, and we recommend them all. We reviewed this last year, I think. When it came out, this is a, a, a triple feature, Universal. It actually has Psycho 2, Psycho 3, and Psycho 4, the beginning. And a lot of people thought when Psycho 2 was greenlit, it was like, you know, you just don't cross that line. You don't, you don't make a sequel to one of the best suspense horror films of all time. But not only did they make a sequel to Psycho, they made a fucking damn good sequel, and a lot of people are uh, still to this day, you know, uh, that haven't seen the film are like, ah, it's just a shitty sequel and shit. If you haven't seen it, it is an awesome freaking sequel. The whole story revolves around, of course, Norman Bates Anthony Perkins, who I think actually per perfected the role even more, and I told the, um, the, the writer of this movie, uh, Tom Holland, that, I mean, I, and he agreed with me, that, uh, uh, but the thing is, Anthony Perkins comes back. He finally gets out of jail or the mental asylum, wherever the hell he was, he was at, and decides to take over the Bates Motel and you know open it back up for business. Was that really the best idea for a job? Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. And um, chaos ensues from there. We won't give any more away. And um, I always loved Psycho too. It was actually. Um, I think one of the first two horror films I ever rented on video. And uh, I can always remember it still to this day, renting it for the first time. And the end, one of the end sequences of uh, Norman knocking the shit out of uh, this old lady with a, a shovel. And that's, just the sound yeah. it makes. That's just like one of the coolest fucking scenes. It's one ever. of the, because the rest of the film is pretty tame in comparison, but that's one of the most, you know, uh, clever and you, you don't see it coming type of sequences in all the film really and it works it works perfectly yeah. at the end of it and then you go on to Psycho 3 which to be quite honest with you I thought Psycho 3 was a little bit of a letdown I, I've, I've seen it many times yeah Psycho 3 is not as good as Psycho 2 but I always like that one as well yeah and um, it's more of the same thing pretty much I think Jeff Fay is in this movie and Diana Scarwood who you may remember from Mommy Dearest, which is a movie I really like. I like that movie a lot. She did a great job in that movie with, uh, I think it was Faye Dunaway was right. in it. But another one I really liked a lot was Psycho for the Beginning, which is a prequel. It must be one of the very uh, first prequels of its kind. And Mick Garris actually directed that. Mighty Mick. You actually get to see Olivia Hussey's titties in that movie. That's the best part of it. That's great. Yeah, Olivia Hussey plays uh, uh, Mrs. Bates. In the movie, and uh, Henry Thomas from E.T. and uh, Fire in the Sky and a few other movies, he plays Norman. And of course, you also have Anthony Perkins um, in the uh, modern day scenes playing Norman. And I always liked it. It was a TV movie, but uh, it was great to finally get it on DVD. And all these movies, you can get all these for like, what? Ten dollars for all three of yeah, them. Yeah, probably might even cheaper than that now. It's a really good deal, and and. It's a really good trilogy of movies, so check it out. Well, 
since we're hovering at about 30 minutes right now, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these films that I've got picked really, really quick. Basically, just... Buddy, time, it doesn't matter. We're going to make it. It's going to be long because Jigger's with us tonight. We're going to get drunk. Yeah, we didn't mention, but... Yeah. Jigger's a bit heavy on the sauce. We're going to get some of, them, some of that to pumpkin schnapps. Uh, that's right. They make pumpkin schnapps. Yeah. They probably do. That's sick. Mm. First up... First up, goddamn, we've been here a while. I'm telling you, it's going to be quicker, though, I'm promising. You got Zombie Holocaust, also known as Dr. Butcher MD, <laughs> which is essentially a film much like uh, Lucio Fulci's Zombie 2, except it's a lot crappier in the storyline and a lot more gore in the uh, uh, end sequences and stuff. But it's it's about cannibal zombies. like They're cannibals before they're turned into zombies, really. So you can't go wrong with that. And then you've got... Jack Hill. Buddy, where did you get that signed? Well, I sent it to Jack Hill. He signed it for me. How this come is... you wouldn't let me send mine? <laughs> what? Let you? I didn't stop We could have saved money on shipping, buddy. You got him to sign that, you fucker. Anyway. Me and Jigger's going to whoop your ass. You like that? That's nice. Anyway. Jack Hill's old. This is Spider Baby. It's got Sid Hagen. That's got to be one of his first, if not his first, film role. Yeah. And... It's about a really demented, inbred-style family that traps a group of their relatives in this house and basically has their way with them. And for the time period that it was made, it's like a Roger Corman-esque type of exploitation film. You didn't see a lot of films like this at that time. And it's just a, a great film. Finally, one of the weirdest fucking films I've ever seen, and that's saying a lot about any film. You really probably have to be on drugs to fully appreciate this film. And unfortunately, I wasn't when I watched it. But this is uh, Alejandro Jodorowsky's El Topo. He also did The Holy Mountain and a bunch of other films that were obviously inspired by drugs. So I can't even explain the movie to you. You just have to watch it. It's yeah, not yeah. even worth explaining. So we got a few, a couple more here, special ones that we want to talk about. This one right here is a little hard to find. But we're going to show it to you just to piss some of you people off. Madman. Now, make no mistake about this. This is one of the best fucking slasher movies the world has ever seen right here. You motherfuckers out there on YouTube think the burning is good. It's better than the fucking burning. This is better than the forest. It's got rubber feet. It is. And it's got... <laughs> and we're good buddies with Madman Mars himself, weren't we? That's true. That guy's killer. It does actually have a lot of stuff going for it. I mean, it's got Galen Ross in it using a pseudonym because she didn't want anybody to know she was in this film, which is pretty bad. Well, I think it was something to do with uh, the uh, SAG and all that stuff. I don't believe that. I think she was ashamed of it. But it also has <laughs> like a killer uh, hot tub pool sequence type of thing yeah. in it. With some I like really Stoopin' had some mighty good titties in the movie. And it's got a big Wilford Brimley looking fucking... Yeah. Genetically deformed killer. Well, the killer itself is what makes Madman awesome. Is he's just this deranged farmer that the legend is that you know one night he just came home and killed his whole family, and now he roams the woods at night, and you dare whisper his name, and he's going to come and get you. And at the beginning, there's a guy that actually calls out Madman. Breaks a window in old madman's house, and lo and behold, the madman, he's coming to get you. Like the boogeyman? Yeah. <laughs> I'm the boogeyman. I'm coming to get you. Um, This movie is actually pretty interesting for another reason, but I don't want to give away the end of the film, but it doesn't end like other slasher films. Look what I films. got. Look what I got. I got madman day for day. So this is an awesome movie, and hopefully one day it'll be released again on DVD. This is out of print. This DVD goes for about 50 or 60 bucks anywhere you uh, go on eBay or whatever. Music in the movie is awesome, too. Just the cinematography is another thing we don't really talk about that much. It's really a sort of a, a beautifully shot film along the lines of like Halloween or something like that. I mean, they didn't have the budget movie like Halloween had, but I like the way they shot the movie. It was, you know, well done. Stuff like that. A great movie, again, though, to watch on Halloween. And one last thing that we got to put on here. It's the ultimate DVD for not only Halloween, not only Thanksgiving, 
not only Christmas, not only uh, New Year's, not only Valentine's Day, Easter, you know, you can go through the whole gamut. This DVD works on all holidays. Really, it's the best horror DVD to watch on Halloween ever, I think. And uh, there's only one place to get it, and that's DeadPit.com. That's Dead Pit on the Road Season 1, which features over three and a half hours of Dead Pit video goodness. If you think the video quality on this is good, what you're watching right now, this DVD's even better. This DVD blows away all of the other previous Dead Pit DVD releases. It is. So you want to check that out. It's got all of our on-the-road reviews from 2006 and 2007, and it also has a buttload of special features. Isn't that right, Jigger? That's right, buddy. So, Dead Pit on the Road Season 1, check that one out at deadpit.com. Only $15 plus shipping and handling. It's sad that this is over with. I almost don't want to stop talking about shit. You know? I don't know. Really. <sighs> Just think, though, if we didn't have the special director's account, we'd have to make at least four uh, videos. I know. That's sad because we're really not anything to do with directors, really. I mean. Yep, we are sort of a big deal. <laughs> we are. So uh, that's the Halloween Horror Picks 2008. I hope everyone out there has a happy Halloween. And you better be staying tuned. You better stay tuned. To our website, check out our commentaries. We're not only going to have the Troll 2 commentary, we're going to, we also have a bunch of other commentaries you can check out for purchase at very low prices, isn't that right? That's true. We've got upwards, you know, three, I think some might be $4. You can check out those commentaries. And there'll be a, a free one on the side, of course, and there'll be one you pay for. I don't really know, you know, what else we could do for Halloween. We, oh, try, really? to, we try to give. We do. We do. We try to keep it special over here. But everyone have a happy Halloween. And always, you can catch me and Uncle Bill over at deadpit.com.